Check, check. All right, yeah, thank you guys for having me out. This is, um, this is um, one of those opportunities that I couldn't pass up. Um, I was actually invited to speak in Canada, but whenever Samantha Beer invited me to come to Beijing, I was like, <laughs> it's a no brainer. Like, I've been wanting to come to Asia all my life. I'm a big fan of Asian cinema, and so this is a dream come true. So, thank you guys for having me out again. Yay, welcome. So, uh, thank you. So let's just say my name is Jonathan Wimbush. I work in, um, well actually I live in South Orange County now, which is right below Los Angeles. And so I've been working in Hollywood for a little bit over a decade now. And I work in television and movies, um, video games, and doing a big billboard in the city um, in New York and Los Angeles. And so um, today, like you and out, we're showing you guys how to shoot in 360. But I wanted to show you is my workflow because since I do have a graphics background, I do everything in CG. So what I do is I create the worlds and then you know there's no stitching involved. All it is is basically what you create is what you get. And um, I'll show you how we did our work on the project with Next Master Mike and the Beastie Boys, where we shot him on green screen and then we composited him into this outer space scene. And so to get it started, I wanted to show you guys the experience. I think my friend here wanted to volunteer to do it. And so I'm going to put, hook them up into the um, mixed reality headset here. And then you guys are going to be able to see on the screen what you see in the headset. So. so what I'm putting on them right now, this is called a sub pack. And it's actually a subwoofer built into a backpack. And since this is a music video experience, um, we built this along with um, Subpack so that you can feel the immersion as you're going through the VR experience. And as soon as he's ready here, we'll get him loaded up. So this is going to be your front. Yeah. Is everything clear?
that's my music, uh, my latest music video. <laughs>
Okay, so you saw us, I put a cube in there. And then I moved the cube back away from the, the camera. And then our point of view on the left hand side, that's where we start placing it. And you can move it left, you can move it right, and you can bring it behind the camera. And even though you can't see it behind the camera, whenever I turn this camera into a, um, a 360 camera, by going to here and clicking on spherical, fit the frame. Actually, I need to set my resolution first. Let's do 3840 by 1920. Okay, so that's just the mono resolution that I like to work at sometimes, plus it's fast. And so you can see on top view, our cube is behind the camera. But if I hit render, you see that this is our equitangular view. So I rendered it out. And even though the cube is behind the camera, now we can see the cube over here because that's because the camera or the cube is behind us. And so, let me pull up this song. Um, so if I'm looking at this um, video that I did here for Transformers, this is when, like once I have like all the textures and the graphics and everything put in, this is what your equitangular map looks like, just to kind of give you a reference of what I'm doing in Cinema 4D here. And then again, if anybody has any questions about what I'm doing here, feel free to ask. And so, what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna show you guys how I did that wormhole effect. And then I'll jump into After Effects and show you some compositing stuff. So what I have here, like I was saying, I took a star map from the NASA website. Let's see if I can find my images. Okay, yeah, so these are the star maps that I took. So I took this from the NASA website, and then I took the nebula. And I manipulated it in Photoshop just to kind of give us the colors that we wanted because I think the original one was just all purple. So I brought it in Photoshop and I added hues of greens and yellows and oranges. And so that's gonna be our texture map for our wormhole effect. So whenever I come into Cinema 4D, let me turn these off. If I look at my top view, I laid a tube down. So basically this is just a cylinder tube and I wrap the star map all around it so that when I have my camera right here, as you can see in the top view, all I'm doing is moving my camera forward, but I'm making sure I move it forward so that there's a looping point. As you can see here, I only have it going at 150 frames. And so to save on render time, I render out the 150 frames, but since it's loopable, I can just keep repeating it and repeating it. And then when I bring it into After Effects, then I can start to manipulate it so it looks like it's not just a loop, it looks like it's actually doing a bunch of crazy stuff around you. So now I'll come into After Effects and show you guys what that looks like. So this is Adobe After Effects. Does anybody use After Effects in here? I know we have some Premiere users, After Effects. Okay, yeah, so you guys are familiar with this program. And then um, you guys are also familiar with, um, my friends at Metal had sold the Skybox um, plugin set to Adobe. So now you can actually do the Immersive 360 video built into After Effects. All the tools that they have there are now included. So I'm gonna open up since rendering takes a little bit, I pre-rendered that sequence that I showed you with the wormhole. So we can save time. So this is what the project that I showed you, this is what it looks like after it's rendered. And so this is that same thing I showed you in cinema where we just took the camera and moved it through a cylinder. And this is what it actually looks like when you render it out in Equitangular. And so the thing that, um, Mixmaster Mike's known for is playing around with records and mixing and scratching, and he's known as the world's fastest DJ. 
And so we thought it'd be fun to kind of have like the Starfield manipulate as he scratched into the beat and everything. So what, one way that I um, started to manipulate the Star Maps is I took his actual audio track. This is one that he gave me that we use out here. Okay, so I don't have the audio hooked up here again, but I have an audio track that I just dropped into my timeline. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add an effect called Metal Mantra. It's one of their plugins and it's actually audio reactive. And so whenever I start adding effects, it will actually start manipulating the world based on the highs, the trebles, and the, the bass frequencies. So I'm gonna go over here to my effects panel, type in metal. Actually, let me try to make sure. Yep, okay, here we go. So I just added this plugin called Mantra VR. And if you look down here, it says audio reactivity. We're gonna actually select our audio layer here. And then it comes with four preset bands. Like basically your band from and to is your frequency. So if you guys are familiar with working in audio, it's just, you know, your, your lows to your highs. And you, hit, you can manipulate what kind of frequencies you want to have your video be translated from. And so I'm just gonna pick band one just because it has a good assortment of um, variety and then let me see what's the cool effect over here i'm just going to start dragging and dropping some effects in here and seeing what they do the way that i like to work in motion graphics sometimes it's just all about experimenting and so it's not all about having a game plan it's kind of just having fun with it because when you're having fun with it it's not work and that's when you start coming up with the best reactions and so let me try this effect to see what it does. I like to just improv a lot of stuff. <coughs> Subred in hyperbolic. That doesn't look like I want to do anything. Let's see. Need that chrome sphere? Oh, yeah, the chrome sphere. Yeah, start with the basic. No, it's cool. All right, well, they haven't seen this one yet. So. Yeah, sure, they haven't seen it. Have you, have you guys ever seen this uh, plugin, Mantra? Hey, have you ever seen this Mantra? Have you ever seen this Mantra? Have you ever seen this Mantra? Is it called Mantra? Mantra. Mantra VR. Have you ever seen this? M-A-N-T-R. Have you ever seen this? Oh, they, they haven't used it before. Okay, so yeah, if you go to metal.com, you yeah. can actually download the free trial for this stuff, and so it's accessible to anybody. So yeah, what I did was I added a Chrome Sphere, I'm gonna add three. You can start seeing the effects up on the screen happening, and then there's not much else to it. You know, I just hit my RAM preview. Kind of see the spheres are starting to be manipulated by the beat there. So what we're gonna do, just start adding more stuff on top of there. Like, what's that one that does the kaleidoscope effect again? Uh, that, are you talking about the Aisha? Is it Aisha or the Aisha hyperbolic? Or hyperbolic. Oh. No, the Aisha, not that one. We're gonna do hyperbolics. I think the hyperbolics are good for it. Yeah. Yeah. That so. Does a kaleidoscope kind of effect. Yeah, so we had the, this effect called hyperbolics and it actually took a star map and turned it into a kaleidoscope. And there's a couple of pre prefects we made here. The kaleidoscope too. And then let me run this down to, yeah, it's like a third, so. So this is just taking the same star map that we had before, applying different effects to it and just having it react to the audio. So whenever I was working on the moon base, this is pretty much what I was just doing. I was just adding effects and manipulating them and twisting and turning them. So do you have any questions while I'm up here playing around? Does anybody have any questions about the effects thing? Okay. Yeah, 
是做这个呃动画的，但是呢，因为我自己也是做动画的，所以我会有一些疑问，就是因为我觉得做动画的时候呢，我们的相机会更自由，呃，不像实拍，它有诸多的限制，不管白平衡、光线之类的，呃，那么在没有这些限制之后呢，我们这个用。三维去做 VR 的话，讲故事上是不是会比这个实拍领先一步，会更早的出一些类似于短片电影之类的东西？就是简单的说话，就是用三维做 VR 去讲故事，是不是比实拍目前来说会更好一点 ？Um, so he was, sorry, he was saying that um the other two uh speakers were mostly talking about um um shooting. Yeah, so you're the only person who's doing the CG work. So we kind of, uh, he's kind of curious how, um, because in the CG world, you're able to manipulate the camera's angle much more freely. And he's wondering if actually CG is taking a step forward in leading the storytelling of the VR industry. He's wondering your view on that. Yeah, definitely. So um, I have a couple of friends that work over at Oculus, and in the past few years, they actually took like work that they did at Maya Cinema 4D and brought that into the Unity game engine. I'm not sure if you guys are familiar with Unity, but it's um, any video games that you play are pretty much built with Unity and um, Unreal. And so that allows you to um, have everything play in real time and add interactivity. And so some of the stuff we've been doing in Hollywood is taking our CG work, bringing it into Unity, and then allowing the people to actually do the storytelling by interacting with the objects. And that seems to be a big hit over there as well as playing with motion simulators. And what we're finding is um, VR isn't taking over like television and storytelling. It's just a asset you can use. You know, like it's um, it's never going to take over TV. I don't think it's just going to be like another way to tell stories. And so basically, the way I was saying how you do stuff in CG, you don't have to worry about stitching. Like everything that you create, you, you can just output it and render and then start compositing. And so that gives us the CG artists the um, the ability to kind of just go wild, and you know we don't have to worry about the lightings and hiding lights and hiding tripods and stuff of that nature. So did I answer your question for you, sir? I, I, I get more off the chat. Actually, we write so at least right now in Hollywood, what we do is we actually green screen capture the actor using a higher end camera, a red. We can be a red, maybe the Antonia lens. So we have to do the effect and then. What Jonathan do is compose an entire environment, and we basically compose two things together. So it's not just one or the other. It's two data. We together we drop the budget down, and then we actually create a seamless environment. So what we do is actually really essential to any any cinematic photo production. And yeah. They have a guy actually like we have a guy like me filming, and we also have a guy like him doing all the movies. Yeah. So um, going off of what he was saying, I can actually show an example here. And so um, this is using the, this program called Taurus that works in After Effects. But what we did was we shot this drummer on a green screen. And so he just shot traditional, actually on a um, DSLR. And what we did was we moved in and around. And we're going to track that footage. And then like he was saying, we actually bring that into the CG world. And so this is kind of showing you how the two worlds can combine there. And so this is just a breakdown. Yeah, so and all this is actually running in real time too, like I was saying. Like we rendered this out in Cinema 4D for a 360 experience, but we also brought it into Unity. So if people want to walk around the environment as well, they can do so. So yeah, that's just uh, another example of what he was saying there.
说这个指挥家是有实时穿插的。就这个片子，我当时看到的时候就震惊了，觉得是做的非常牛。但是呢，我至今其实我知道他有这种比较笨的方法，但是我想问一下，就是如果是您的话，您会采用什么方法去处理这种就是实拍没有绿幕，但是会有这种三 D 粒子穿插的这种效果？ Yeah, uh, and also maybe show, like maybe we can show this around to the audience as well. Oh, we can show this around to the audience as well. So, uh, they, 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 uh, how does he? How does that get rendered? And how would you do it to that effect? Yeah, definitely. So you're familiar with uh, Artiscope, correct? So uh, uh, you familiar? What is it? It's called Artiscope. Ro. Ro. So uh, these uh, creators are suggesting how they think of it is to you like pretty much hand carve these images out and extract the images. That's what we're Yeah, so they, they don't think that's the probably not the best solution. Is it? Or they wonder how we would do that. So for that particular video, since it is in the orchestra, I mean, sometimes you get footage like that and you have to just work with it. And so what they do is they rotoscope, and so you're cutting that. Okay, so you're cutting that guy out frame by frame. So you're actually outlining him, and you're cutting him out so that you can put the effects around him. And so like I was showing you how you could bring the effects in um, Cinema 4D, like they would do those particle effects in Cinema, render those, render those out, and then composite those behind him. And so basically, let me show you what I did here. Um, this is a project I worked on last year for Candy Crush. And um, it's kind of the same thing, except for I'm not using live footage. This is all graphics, but I can kind of show you a breakdown of how that works. And so down here in our timeline, you have all your, oops. So this is our timeline, and each one of these layers or you know different graphics or different cutouts and so what you would do is you would just have to do some compositing and so you know you start with your background you add your sun in let me see you add your, your clouds in and so it's just basically building layers on top of layers and for to do it in live video like that like these are your graphics, you have to cut the guy out and then composite them in behind them, kind of like in this fashion. And so. And just add on that, uh, if you have a live footage, uh, Rotoscoping, you can, you can use Volca VR to do a live tracking. That would be easier, but there's no easy way out. Rotoscoping, you have to bring back and track it. Also. Yeah, I just want to say, like I've tried Milka, and honestly, I, I feel like doing it the, the hand way, you know, like just going frame by frame or. You cut out a frame, you know, then you keyframe it, you jump 10 frames, you keyframe it, and then your, you know, your outline will kind of go around and gather. And so, yeah, I don't have any footage that I can cut out to show you how to do that, I don't think. Um, Okay. 
So he still wants to follow up on uh, rather than uh, having compositing real life footages into a CG environment, which is what you were showing. And he's wondering is it possible to render uh, add on like special effects? Into real footages, like the other way around. Yeah, yeah. And how would how would you do that? Okay, so if you want to add, if you want to add um special effects to your footage, like are you familiar with um doing special effects already in After Effects? Because it's the same workflow, but you're. I'm sorry, can you hear? He's listening. Oh, okay. Yeah, I was saying. So it's basically the same workflow. If you're used to. And so like this is your Equitain review. Like say just pretend this is actual real footage. And so if I wanted to bring some effects in here, like okay, so I brought him in here. It actually comes inside of app and it's, and it's immersive panel. So if I go over here to my effects and presets, you look for immersive video. And these are the tools that you'll use you know, to, um, it, would ask, it would automatically map it for 360 video for you. So if you wanted to add like glow to it, you know, you drop and drag your glow in there and it will automatically interpret that for you. So you don't have to worry about um, like how would it wrap around your epitangular sphere. Okay. Okay, and that's gonna say you you, if you're like if you're dropping like logos and images and stuff in there, there's an effect here called VR playing the sphere. And so when you bring that into your composition here, that automatically brings it into your equitangular view. So if you just drop it in, usually it will look all distorted and warped. So you have to make sure you add your VR playing the sphere and that's how you would add all your effects in there and have it map according to how you your equitangular stuff.